Hello and welcome to Rathod's IS. Today in this session, we are going to see current affairs of 21st January 2024. So today is Sunday. So many students have the tendency to skip this Sunday's newspaper. But my suggestion is don't skip this Sunday's newspaper because you can cover current affairs of environment and ecology and as well as science and technology from this Sunday's newspaper. Okay, and one more thing here is whenever you are picking up the articles, try to pick up articles which are relevant from our examination point of view. So, there will be hardly 7 to 8 articles every day which are important from our examination point of view. Okay, so pick those only, don't waste your time on reading this newspaper with irrelevant articles. So, first, let us see the front page. So, this is front page of Delhi edition. So actually I got a comment like we have to take only Delhi edition or not. No, it is not like that. So in which region you are living, so you will be getting that edition. Like if you are staying in Hyderabad, you will be having Hyderabad edition. So if you are staying in Chennai, you will be having Chennai edition like that. Okay. So whichever the newspaper edition is available, you can go through your edition only. Okay. So there is nothing like mandatory. You have to read only Delhi edition. It is not like that. Okay, so let us see the front page and this is the first article which is very important from your environment and ecology. So title says wetland nature tourism, wetland nature tourism gets flip fill up. So this article it is talking about wetland. So the key word here is wetland and here it is talking about one important word that is nature tourism. So there are two key words which are present. So let us see the dimensions. So many students are messaging me like why are you giving dimensions? So explain everything. So if I explain everything, it will take a lot of time and it will be like spoon feeding. So if once I start giving the spoon feeding, you will be dependent. So I don't want my students will be dependent and this dependency is not at all useful for your UPSC preparation and you have to do some work. Okay. So there are two keywords. So first one is wetland and second one is nature tourism. So there are two keywords. So first one is wetland and second one is nature tourism. So as I said this topic is important from GS paper 3 under environment and ecology. Correct? It is important from environment and ecology. So here you have to know about what is wetland. The first one is you have to know what is the meaning of wetland. So in this wetlands we have two types natural wetlands and second one is artificial wetlands. So in this wetlands we have two types, so one is natural wetlands and second one is artificial wetlands. And here you have to know some examples. For example, we have rivers, we have lakes, we have ponds. Okay, so these will come under your natural wetlands. And if you see artificial for example rice fields. And for example, dams, they come under artificial wetlands. So this is the first dimension. And next one is, now you are seeing the problem that is degradation of wetlands. So we are seeing this degradation of wetlands. So you have to see like what are the reasons for the degradation and what are the measures can be taken. So first one is reasons and second one is measures and one important convention we have is Ramsar convention. So we have this Ramsar convention which talks about conservation of wetlands. So what it talks about? It talks about conservation of wetlands.
okay so you have to remember this ramsar convention is talking about conservation of wetlands here you have to see how many ramsar sites are there and where they are in which state so this is important okay so this is about some dimensions regarding this wetland and even uh, you can think about what is significance or you can also think like what are the services provided by this wetlands okay what are the services provided by this wetlands so all these are the dimensions from your environment and ecology and you have to see second dimension here it is about nature tourism right so you have to know what is this nature tourism what is the significance and government came up with one scheme to promote nature tourism you have to know about the details of this scheme okay so these are the some important things that you have to remember clear yes now let us move on to next topic since today page i found nothing much important so you can go to the states page so in this states page what article it is one nation one election a threat to democracy says aam aadmi party so as you all know that recently aam aadmi party got status of national political party yes or no so it is talking about one nation one election this one nation one election is also called as simultaneous election so what is the meaning of this simultaneous election so what is the meaning of this simultaneous election it is nothing but elections for center and states at the same time for example lok sabha and state legislative assemblies at the same time so this is called as simultaneous elections but as of now so we don't have the simultaneous elections as on no recent elections in five states happen like rajasthan telangana okay chatisgarh like that and in this year 2024 elections are there for ap and even we have this lok sabha elections that means you are not following the simultaneous elections now okay so here you have to know like what is the simultaneous elections and you have to see what are the advantages and also disadvantages of this simultaneous elections or you can see what are the arguments in favor of the simultaneous elections and as well as arguments against so this topic is important from your gs paper to under polity and this topic is important from your mains so in mains you can get a question of the simultaneous elections already question regarding the simultaneous elections asked in your upsc mains okay so these are the things that you have to remember and if you move on yes in this news page you can see one important article it is about india myanmar border to be fenced soon says amit shah so this article is talking about india myanmar border so actually by addressing 60th foundation day of sashastra seema bal so there are two important things that are present here so let us see the dimensions so this article is talking about india myanmar relations so especially this article is talking about border and next one is ssb so sastra seema bal so what are the dimensions that you can think here is you have to know which are the indian states sharing boundary with this myanmar so this is the first one 
and you have to see the bordering countries so india is sharing directly land boundary with different countries like pakistan afghanistan china nepal bhutan bangladesh and myanmar right but if you see in case of afghanistan yes we are sharing boundary on map but actually it comes under pak occupied kashmir region or area under pak administration okay it is around 108 kilometers but with all these countries india is sharing longest boundary with bangladesh so actually what is the issue between india and myanmar border is so we have free movement agreement we have free movement agreement so in this free movement agreement if you see this is boundary so this is india and this is myanmar till 15 kilometers on the both the sides people can move freely so there is no need of visa but we are going to remove this free movement agreement now so because of this this is a news so from this context you have to know what is this free movement agreement okay and which are the states sharing boundary with myanmar and you have to see what are the issues between this free movement agreement so why we are revoking now what are the reasons and this one is here it is talking about ssb that is sashastra seema bill okay so you have to see like what are the examples of this central armed police forces okay and here you have to see in which area they are bordering so bordering between india and which and which countries and what is the mandate and you have to see what is the mandate so all these things are important clear and now let us move on to next topic it is about world vision india losses fcra registration so here this article is important from your polity point of view so here you have to focus on two important things so what are they here is first one is fcra and next one is ngos so if you have gone through your syllabus of governance which comes on the gs paper too so you will be having this topic directly ngos shgs etc so you have to know what is this ngo so what are the dimensions that you have to think here is so what is this ngo and you have to see some examples of ngo which are operating in india and ngos are famous for releasing of reports so you have to know some examples of reports released by ngo and in this ngos we have different categories some will be focusing on child some will be ch focusing on uh, orphan people and elderly people okay some will be focusing on cancer patients and some will be focusing on promotion of education against child marriage etc you have to see the different categories of ngos and actually this ngos they will be getting funds so in this funds they will be getting within country and they will be getting from other countries so that will come to the international fundings so the issue here is if we are getting international funds from other countries so other countries influence will be there in our country right sometimes it will be also influencing the economy it will be also influencing the polity etc so to control that government came up with this fcra that is foreign contribution regulation act so through this fcra government is controlling international funds to this ngos so if you have an ngo if you are having ngo for example i am maintaining ngo for example so i want to receive funds from for example usa or european countries or african countries like that so i have to take permission from the government of india and i have to be registered under this fcra then only my ngo is eligible to get funds from internationally or from other countries okay so now the issue is the present ngo which had been violated the rules and regulations 
and it lost license or registration in 2022 november itself okay so this is one issue and here we have to know about what is foreign contribution act so what are the key provisions and recently we got amendments so what are they so all these things that you have to remember and this topic is important from both your prelims and as well as your mains clear so let us move on and let us see next topic so most of the articles are political articles especially relating to this ayodhya opening tomorrow okay so how many of you from this ayodhya region please let me know yes here in this uh, page of world you can see one article that is ethnic killings in a sudan city left up to 15000 death says un so this article it is talking about massacre it is talking about massacre especially it is against one ethnic group okay about 10000 to 15000 people they were killed in one city in sudan's west darfur region so that is a case of ethnic violence so this ethnic violence by this paramilitary rapid support forces okay it is it is done by this paramilitary rapid forces rapid support forces and you have to see that area okay so you have to know about the area name and you will be getting question like so area name why it is in us so area name you have to know and you have to see like in which country it is located and what is the reason why it is in us so all these three are very important that region name is elgenia okay elgenia so how you will pronounce you can pronounce like that okay so in the science page there is only one article which is important from our examination point of view that is urbanization bhuvaneshwar impacts winter temperature so because of urbanization what happens i will tell you the dimensions then you can easily connect the article okay so this article is talking about urbanization and temperature change so this article is talking about urbanization and temperature change so let us see the dimension so because of urbanization what is happening now we are going for deforestation so try to understand the points so we are going for deforestation that means tree cover is decreasing and unplanned or expanding of cities and increasing of slum areas and increasing of vehicular pollution increasing of greenhouse gases encroachment of wetlands increased concretization increased electricity use okay so these are some important problems that we are seeing because of this urbanization so because of this deforestation the tree cover is decreasing ultimately there is increasing of temperature and even what happened because of vehicular pollution because of this greenhouse gas emissions that is linked to this global warming right and because of all these things due to this urbanization that led to increasing of temperature change that leads to increasing of temperature change so temperature is increasing because of this urbanization so this article is important from your gs paper 3 from your environment and ecology so one thing i want to say is if you are understanding the things or if you are liking my approach how i am dealing with this current affairs 
So I am trying to simplify this current affairs as much as possible so that no one will be having the problem. So if you really understand this current affairs and if you are really understanding the points like how to read newspaper, please do hit the like button. Don't leave the session with, hit, without hitting this button. So please hit this like button and even try to share this video to your friends. Okay, so these are the dimensions that you have to think about and these are the important articles that appear in our today's Hindu newspaper. Now let us see the notes part. So this is the notes and if you want to get the notes you can join the telegram channel. Link is given in description box. And we are starting this mains answer writing new batch from tomorrow onwards. So the important uh, thing that you have to think in your preparation of your UPSC is focus on mains. So if you are not focusing on mains, I can say strongly that you will be out of the race. Yes, because it is not about the prelims and interview, it is about the mains. That is very, very important in your UPSC preparation. So whenever you are starting your preparation from our day onwards, you have to start writing something. So even if you are writing relevant things or irrelevant things, so start writing something. So whenever you start writing something, then only you will improve. Unless and until if you are not starting and if you will be thinking like after prelims, you will be starting that it will not work and it is not also efficient. So at least before one to one and a half year time, yes, you have to start this answer writing. Then only you will be getting the proper skills and then only you will be having the arrangement of content and alignment, everything that you can develop with the practice. So try to join this course it is very, very useful. And here we are covering your entire your GS that is general studies, paper one, paper two, paper three and paper four along with essays and case studies. And this course it is for one year and we are also going to provide you the modal answer for each and every question with a detailed explanation okay and even detailed evaluation of your answers so we are going to give you detailed feedback like what you wrote what can be written so how can you improve your presentation so everything will be given in a detailed feedback and even on every sunday we will be having the doubt clearing sessions so in that doubt clearing sessions so if you have any doubt regarding means or answering skills or anything we will be discussing and apart from that we are also going to have live essay writing practice and case study so how many of you wrote your essay in your school days so many of them so after your school days have you ever attempted this writing of essay no no one right so because of this lack of practice which is creating lots of fear in students so you should not be trapped in that fear so whenever you start your preparation so come and join us with this mains answer writing program okay so i hope you are going to join and I can say one thing strongly, believe me. So if you believe me, so within three months of time, yes, you will be getting how to write an answer. So you'll be getting high idea like how to write an essay and as well as case study for sure. So this is 100% guarantee that I'm giving. You can try to join this course. And if you want to join this course and if you want to talk to me directly, you can call me on this number 8074765513. Or else you can directly visit our website and you can purchase a course there also. Okay, so now let us move back to our notes and let us see the important articles that appear in our newspaper today. So first article is about wetland, wetland nature tourism gets a flip up. So Philip, so this is very, very important article. So if you see the context, why it is in news here is, so union government has embarked so union government has embarked on a mission to promote tourism. So actually our central government, it wants to focus or it wants to improve this tourism. And especially in this ecologically sensitive wetlands, they are known as Ramsar sites. So in Ramsar sites, our government want to improve this tourism. For example, Chilika, uh, Chilika Lake. Next one is Sultanpur Bird Sanctuary in Haryana. So in these regions. And the focus of this initiative, it would be to shift these fragile wetlands from high value tourism to nature tourism. So we want to move towards this nature tourism by directly supporting conservation action. 
and even we are also allowing now this local communities and economies to the lead so local communities they have to maintain this now and if you see here ramsar sites they are nothing but a wetland designated to be of international importance okay so if there is any degradation is happening so that site will be placed under this ramsar list so under environmental treaty which signed in february 1971 so it was signed at ramsar in iran under a species of unesco <clears throat> and if you see so far 16 ramsar sites they were been identified under the initiative of five of them had been taken up as the project pilot project which is doing in this five projects or five areas and they are focusing on skill development of facilitators and they are focusing on this tourism service providers and even stakeholders around these sites so all these things are very very important and if you see which of those five wetlands the first one is sultanpur national park where it is located in haryana bidar kanika in odisha chilika in odisha and sirpur in madhya pradesh and yashwini sagar in madhya pradesh so these are five so here you have to remember the areas and in which location they are from so in this we also you can get question in your prelims clear and this initiative it is to develop these sites and these sites will be developed by ministry that is union tourism ministry and ministry of environment forest and climate change so actually government came up with one ambitious scheme to protect or to conserve this wetlands and that scheme is amrit darohar capacity building scheme so it is amrit darohar capacity building scheme so this amrit darohar initiative it is part of 2023 to 2024 budgetary announcement so here this scheme was launched in june 2023 and they want to promote unique conservation values of ramsar sites in the country and actually through this scheme they want to even generate employment opportunities and it also supports the livelihood of this local people so if you see some facts regarding this scheme that is amrit darohar scheme so this scheme which is launched by ministry of environment forest and climate change along with the collaboration with ministry of tourism so this um, aim of this amrit darohar scheme it is under this initiative indian institute of tourism and travel management will build the capacity of local community members around different ramsar sites and next one is indian institute of tourism and management it is autonomous body under ministry of tourism so what is the significance of this scheme so significance here is it will strengthen nature tourism and as well as it is also trying to provide livelihood for the local peoples because this community is your participating and if you see some facts regarding this nature tourism and wet component so here the nature tourism and wet component of amrit darohar initiative so it is implemented by ministry of tourism and as well as moefcc so what is the aim aim it is to enhance livelihood opportunities for the local communities and here we have to harness nature tourism potential and as well as ramsar sites across the country so what is the meaning of this ramsar sites so these are the wetlands of international importance so these are the wetlands of international importance and they have been designated under criteria of ramsar convention of wetlands so when we came up with this convention in year 1971 and contains representatives of uh, rare and unique wetland types and their importance in in conserving this biological diversity and this ramsar convention which is named after city of ramsar which is located in iran okay and it was signed in 1971 on february 2nd okay so these are the some important facts that you have to remember from this article and next topic is about the sites in india so as i said there are many sites so you have to see from which state we have which type of ramsar site okay you have to see and here in this rajasthan we have this sambar lake in rajasthan we have this sambar lake and here in the west bengal we have east calcutta wetlands and mizoram pala wetland and also uh, we have rudrasagar lake in tripura loktak lake in manipur deep or bilin assam so they are single single sites 
and you have to make a list like from which state which are the sites which are present okay so from this area also you can get a question and next topic it is about india myanmar border to be forced or fenced soon says amit shah so this article is talking about ending of free movement regime between india and myanmar so here you have to see some lots and lots of dimensions like what are the reasons and what are the solutions so if you see context it says that our union government that is nothing but central government will soon fence around 1643 kilometers of border so that border is present between india and myanmar and it will consider like it is considering like ending of free trade or free movement regime agreement within these two countries so with these two countries there is ending of free movement regime so if you see the details it says that this free movement regime which had been implemented in 2018 as part of india's act east policy and it also allowed the residents of both the countries living along the border to travel up to 16 kilometers okay each other without there is no need of visa but whenever we are ending this agreement yes we need this visa so if you are talking about this uh, free movement regime so it is implemented in 2018 and this this agreement which allows the people residing in the either side of india's myanmar border and to venture about 16 kilometers into the each other territories and there is no requirement of visa so even they can cross over and production of a border passes with one year validity and can stay up to 2 weeks and this one is the border between india and myanmar which is around 1643 kilometers and we have four states to sharing boundary that is mizoram manipur nagaland and arunachal pradesh mizoram manipur nagaland and arunachal pradesh so let us have a look over the map i don't know whether it is visible or not okay so this red line is a boundary line between india and myanmar so this is myanmar and this is india so we have arunachal pradesh nagaland manipur and as well as mizoram they are sharing boundary so next topic it is about world vision india losses fcra regulations so please let me know why there is a need of regulating this ngos in the comment box do it fast please pause the video and think about that and please let me know your answer in the comment box <clears throat> okay now let us see the context why it is in news so union home ministry has cancelled registration or we can say like permission of this ngo that is world vision india license had been cancelled under this fcra by central government so actually this world vision india is a ngo that focuses on children issues it is focusing on children issues and is us based ngo okay and it is one of the largest christian voluntary groups which is present over 100 countries so it has been operating in india from last 70 years onwards it is operating in india so if you see some details it says that according to the ministry's order indian ngo is no longer eligible to receive foreign donations if they are not getting the permission okay under this fcra they should not receive any donations okay so why it has got cancelled license because the because of account of violation of fcra rules and this ngo which has been registered under fcra since 1986 to receive money and that money used to the conduct uh, conduction of uh, or conducting social and educational programs for children So, if you're talking about some facts regarding this FCRA, so FCRA is uh, was enacted in year nineteen seventy six, and during this nineteen seventy five we have emergency, right? That too during this emergency period, due to concerns about the foreign interference in 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 the India's affairs through financial support, and whenever these foreign institutions are setting up in India, and if they are providing the uh, funds here, so there will be the impact of these countries. on internal affairs 
so because of this to stop this government came up with fcra so this fcra which was designed to regulate foreign donations so it is regulating this foreign donations to individuals and associations and ensure they uh, operate in the manner consistent with the values of a sovereign democratic republic and if we're talking about validity and renewal fcra registration is valid for five years okay it's valid for five years and if you want to go for extension or renewal you can go for renewal okay so they have to apply apply for the renewal within six months of registration expiry and this one is the government has authority to cancel ngos fcra registration on the various grounds like if they are violating the provisions or rules and regulations of the act and if there is a lack of reasonable activity in their chosen field for two consecutive years so once it is cancelled here now again this ngo is ineligible for re-registration for three years after three years they can go for registration again so next topic is about ethnic killings in sudan city that left up to 15,000 people death so this is the thing which said by united nations so here what is the context around 10,000 and 15,000 people they were killed in one city in sudan okay so because of ethnic violence between this paramilitary rapid support forces and allied Arab, allied arab militia so between these two people there are ethnic violence is happening and around 10 to 15,000 people they were died so now let us see what are the details which are given in this article so this united nation came with a report that is united nation security council report so it monitors the toll in this el geninia okay el geninia so it is like estimating around 10,000 to 15,000 people they died in this event and people they were killed across sudan since war erupted on 15th april 2023 onwards okay so if you see here between this april and june last year so el janina experienced intense violation and even they are monitoring okay it the monitors wrote and accusers of this rsf and allies they are targeting this ethnic african um, salish tribe in attacks and they may amount to the war crimes and crimes against humanity so this uh, ethnic war is happening against this masalit tribe okay you can get a question like recently masalit tribe is in use in which country they are located so that is in sudan okay so now let us see the map of sudan so this is sudan so here we have this el Jania. so here in this region the issue is going on so let us point out the countries which are sharing boundary with this sudan so south to the sudan south sudan is there so we have ethiopia eritrea and here we have red sea egypt libya chad and congo republic okay so car it is very very important so these are the some important countries and here it is sharing directly the boundary with red sea so this is very very important okay and next topic it is about urbanization and its impact on climate change in introduction itself i detail explain like what are the impacts and how it is going to affect climate yes or no so now let us see the context as i said this article is important from your environment and ecology so if you see context it says that more than half that means more than 50 percentage of world's population now they are residing in the cities or urban areas and these people they are very much vulnerable to this climate change okay why because of increasing of heat increasing of stress so globally cities they contribute more than 80 percentage of global gdp and also they are releasing 75 percentage of greenhouse gas emissions or carbon dioxide emissions and in this way both contributors to climate change and also potential agent for tackling it so if you see the details here ministerial meet which had been recently held that is in this cop 28 so they focused on urbanization and the climate change and they also focused on what is the importance and what is the role of cities in achieving this climate change mitigation and as well as adaptation targets so these initiatives they show importance attached to the cities and their role in global affairs 
including climate change mitigation as well as adaptation. And if you see one more important thing here is Bhuvaneshwar. It is a tier 2 city in eastern part of our country that is in the eastern part of or in the eastern state of Odisha. So it is rapidly urbanizing in the recent times. For example, the buildings had been increased by 166 percentage during the period of 2014 to 2015. Okay, 2004 to 2015. So studies also said that satellite based observations showed that satellite based observations showed that a night time heat dome over the city had been elevated temperature. So there is increasing of temperature that is seen that is around 1 degree centigrade. So in, ad in addition to the warming here because of climate change but even there is also trapping of heat by this concrete structures. For example, we have uh, roads, we have the big big buildings. So they will be attracting or they will be uh, absorbing the more heat. And because of this trapping of heat by this concrete and asphalt materials that used to build the city and there is also decreased evapotranspiration. So when, what is the meaning of evapotranspiration is nothing but we have plants and for this plants for example we have leaves. So in this leaves we have the small small holes that is called as stomata. So through this stomata water is get evaporated. That concept of evaporating of water from the leaves of the plants that is called as evapotranspiration. So whenever there is cutting down of trees here so the number of uh, leaves which are present is decreasing right. So because of this we can see there is decreased evapotranspiration due to the replacement of natural surfaces with artificial impervious sub, uh, surfaces. Okay and even that is also one of the important reason for this global warming and even there is inclusion of minimalistic 3D structure of city with these simultaneous or uh, with, the, with, the, with the simulations of winter time which showed that enhancing warming of almost 0 0.4 degree centigrade in the eastern lowland regions of the city and which is most consequence of topographical asymmetry. So here because of this inclusion of this 3D structures also there is also simulations for winter time. So and you are also seeing that there is enhanced warming and that is around 0 0.4 degree centigrade in the eastern lowlands of the region of the city. So because of all these things, because of the impact that I already explained you, that led to the improving of uh, increasing of this global warming and increasing of vehicular emissions, increasing of uh, carbon dioxide emissions that is leading to this global warming or increasing of heat in the cities. So this is about this topic and this is our main sunsetting course. I wish you are going to join this course. And the students, one thing I can say strongly is if you want to clear UPSC, then come and join this course. Okay, because I will be personally guiding you. If you have any doubt, you can talk to me directly and you can resolve your doubts. And I will be the mentor if you are joining this course. Okay, so if you want to talk to me directly, you can call me on the number that I said. And even you can see the number in description box as well. And I will show you like where can you get the notes of this class. So this class notes you can get in telegram channel. So this is the telegram channel Rathod's IS classes. So if you join here you can get the PDF. Or if there is any important updates we will be posting here. And this is our YouTube channel Rathod's IS Academy. Please do subscribe to this channel. Don't forget to subscribe. And next one is this is our website Rathod's IS Academy. So if you are visiting to our website for the first time, you have to click on this login register. Okay, and click on do not have account and first do register. So after registering once, you can use the login ID and password. And after that, you can click on this courses and course list. So these are the different courses that we are offering. And if you are feeling that you are, you are lagging in so and so subject, you can take the single module also. So the price is very very less okay so you can check the price by clicking this buy now and later on you can go for purchasing of the course it is your wish and if you want to watch the demo videos you can click on play course and you can watch the demo videos and next at last here we have this main sunsetting course you have to click on buy course there and you can purchase the course okay so that's all for today so i hope you enjoyed this lecture so if you really like this class hit the like button 
and please do share this video to your friends also and don't forget to subscribe to this Rathod Science Academy. Thank you so much for watching.